What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video. In this video we will talk about the liverpool Leon game where Liverpool won their last preseason game 3-1 and we have Mohamed Salah, Firmino and Alisson back into the starting lineup. Sadio Mane will join I think after the Community Shield. So what did you think of the game? What did you think of Alisson's blunder which was very uncharacteristic and also we will talk about many different uh, news, uh, transfer news and other news about Liverpool FC. So if you enjoy these types of videos, leave a like, it really helps me out and shows me that you guys enjoy the videos. And Liverpool started off uh, pretty sloppy. Uh, it was a nothing ball in from the left wing of Leon's player and Alisson tried to catch the ball and he, he fumbled it. It, had, it looks like Alisson had a Mignolet's butter fingers, if you like. They exchanged the fingers for a match or for a few minutes. And it was very uncharacteristic. I think Alisson was still on the beach probably in his mind. So he wasn't like 100% mentally sharp, fully focused on the game. And he fumbles the ball. If the ball goes between his legs, it goes to the Leon player who takes a long touch. And I think Lovren would have covered it. But in the end, Alisson takes the guy down. It was a penalty. But it wasn't a yellow card for Alisson and Memphis Depay, the former Man United player and Memphis Depay, the player who has been linked with Liverpool many many times before has slotted home to penalty and he also had a good chance after the penalty to score. Mohamed Salah was trying to get involved in the game, he had a couple of good runs and he had a shot which goes wide but then a moment of magic by Bobby Firmino and I'm so happy for him because after Firmino won the Champions League, he won the Copa America with Brazil, so his confidence is sky high and for in his first game back, in just 17 or 16 minutes, he takes the ball down on his chest and he, he shoots from a point blank, very very tight angle and it goes into the far corner, it goes past the goalkeeper into the far corner and uh, I was just so so happy for that goal because Liverpool I think um, didn't want to be one nil down uh, for for too long and in the end Firmino finished it uh, finished that off brilliantly so it's 1-1 Liverpool are back in the game and just three minutes later across from the right the Nair fails to clear the ball uh, center back I'm not sure who uh, he, he is exactly I think Anderson or something like that he actually finishes it brilliantly into his own net. Unfortunately, it was an own goal. It hits his right shin instead of clearing the ball with his left foot. He tries to clear it with his right foot. It hits his shin and goes perfectly into the top corner. Perfectly for Liverpool, but not perfectly for the defender. Very unlucky moment. And Liverpool were a little bit fortunate to be 2-1 up. But I think overall, we attacked more, a lot more than Leon. We had more dangerous opportunities. So I think Liverpool deserved to win in this game but the highlight of the game apart from the Firmino goal I think came when Harry Wilson got the ball in the like after 53 or 54 minutes like 25 yards out middle of the goal and he unleashed an absolute rocket an absolute thunderbolt into the top corner Harry Wilson has been one of the most impressive youngsters in preseason and I'm just so so happy for him and uh, Liverpool have uh, such a high price tag for Harry Wilson he is basically for sale but only for like 25 million that no play no club will pay 25 million for Harry Wilson who only had like one good season in the championship no disrespect to Harry Wilson but you know proper Premier League clubs have that amount of money to pay for a youngster 25 million and I think not many Premier League clubs want to take a punt on, on Harry Wilson and I, I'm happy with, with that because I want Harry Wilson to stay at Liverpool to keep playing and to keep scoring magnificent goals like this one I'm just watching the goal replay on my uh, laptop screen here Harry Wilson take a bow what a finish what a goal everybody was uploading that in the stadium and I was uploading it and as you can see I was on holiday I got a little bit sunburned <laughs> at Lake Balaton so I didn't watch the game live I could only watch it when I got home because we had no Wi-Fi at our place where we were staying but I just arrived home uh, like an hour ago so I as soon as I got home I watched the highlights and now I'm making a video about the game for you guys so I really hope that you understand the videos will be back on a daily basis regularly
regularly from now on and the carrier mood videos are returning as well so I'm back home now so stay tuned and I think overall Liverpool had a mixed preseason a very mixed bag but overall I was a lot lot uh, more happy with this performance than with our past like three or four performances this looked like a proper Liverpool performance and with uh, Salah and, uh, and Firmino back and Alisson back, Liverpool looked much more comfortable. Alisson made amends for that horrendous uh, howler in the, in the first half because he, he saved a one-on-one -on -one against uh, Traore in the second half. And also Harvey Elliott had a very, very impressive cameo in the second half. Harvey Elliott had a good shot which was uh, well saved by the Lyon goalkeeper. But uh, as a 16-year-old player to almost score for Liverpool in pre-season is very, very impressive. So I was very happy with Harvey Elliott's uh, contribution and I just wanted to, do, to talk about a little bit about Ryan Brewster who is also another of the very impressive youngsters in Liverpool preseason. He finished I think the preseason as the top scorer with four goals. Very very impressive and I think he still has a little bit to build up his fitness because he had a, such a long injury uh, for he was out for a year and uh, Ryan Brewster actually picked Liverpool himself at 14 years old at just 14 years old he had the knowledge to pick Liverpool because uh, he knew that the Liverpool Academy is the best place for young players to develop in England and it's not everywhere that you get one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions from Steve McManaman, Robbie Fowler, Steve Highway while uh, Michael Beale who was Brewster's coach at Chelsea before moving to the Liverpool Academy was also crucial in him coming uh, up from uh, from south up to Liverpool at 14 years old Brewster mo moved to Merseyside from London when uh, more uh, lucrative offers with more money were offered to him in London but his dad uh, says money never came into the equation for Ryan Brewster. This is what uh, Ryan Brewster's father Ian Brewster explained and I quote I gave him a scenario when he was uh, 14 years old. I said I gi if I give you 20 grand to stay at Chelsea or 10 grand to go to Reading but you will play every week what would you do? And he said I would go to Reading dad. I tried to call his bluff. You would go to Reading when you could be getting 20 grand in Chelsea. Why would you do that? And he said because I would be playing every week in front of thousands of people and that's the right kind of attitude not many not all young players have that attitude sometimes they choose money instead of playing regularly but I think uh, at this stage in Ryan Brewster's career and even at 14 years old the most important thing was to play regularly and I think Ryan Brewster knew that at Liverpool he would get enough, um, enough opportunities to, to break through into the first team and Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp will give him opportunities to break through the first team. Also Fabinho said this uh, in an interview, even when I wasn't playing I already knew I had to work hard because I knew if I played a few games on the spin I could become an important player for Liverpool. I think I've shown that and it's also something that I wanted to have more responsibility in this team to keep improving as a player. I've always aspired to that and the manager trusts me more. I finished last season strongly. I nearly always played. We cannot become complacent. We must keep wanting more and that's what I try to do. So Fabinho has been very very impressive for Liverpool and I'm just really really happy that he's our player and Liverpool left back Andrew Robertson made um, a, a comparison between uh, Liverpool and Tottenham and also um, Naby Keita on Naby Keita. So let's listen to what Andrew Robertson said. The same got said about Tottenham last season that they wouldn't kick on without signings but they went on and had a more successful season than the season before that. For us for Liverpool the most important thing was keeping all of our key players and we have managed to do that, have all stayed together and that's a big thing. It's about sticking together and getting even more familiar with each other. We have had players that have been in their first seasons, Keita and Fabinho and Alisson, their first season is over now and they have settled in so I'm sure they will be looking to kick on and so will everyone else and also uh, Sharon Shakiri. I, I wanted to add that. And that is a very smart point that Robertson uh, says here that uh, it was as important for Liverpool to keep their, all their key players together 
as it would have been maybe to sign a big player like Nicolas Pepe. It's now official that Nicolas Pepe went to Arsenal, which I'm really sad about that. I might make a separate video on that. But it uh, ultimately, uh, Nicolas Pepe chose uh, money instead of success, in my opinion, in terms of he wanted the biggest wages, the biggest bonuses, and the agent wanted to be the biggest bonuses as well. Liverpool offered a, a, a moderate salary and a moderate transfer fee to Lille and to Nicolas Pepe and to their agent, but they wanted the biggest box and Arsenal were prepared to pay close to 100 million pounds for a player who had one very good season in France. But apart from that, I don't think one good season in France justifies a 100 million pounds price tag. And that price tag comes with the, the, the base transfer fee, which you see reported, plus added bonuses that will kick in when Nicolas Pepe plays for two free seasons at Arsenal, plus the massive agent's fee. Some say that the agent wanted 6-7 million euros, but I saw some reports that the agent wanted 10 plus million euros just for himself, and Liverpool weren't prepared to do that. And also, if you add up the agent's fees, the bonuses, the transfer fee, his salary, all the kinds of bonuses that he has, it will become an almost like a 100 million pound transfer deal and at that money I didn't want Liverpool to sign him because I don't think Nicolas Pepe is worth that money and he would have been sitting on the bench uh, sometimes for Liverpool well maybe like most of the time for Liverpool and frankly Liverpool are not in a financial position to pay 80 million or 70 million or whatever it was plus bonuses plus agents fees for a player that will sit on the bench but that's just my take on it uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with me feel free to disagree with me in the comments below it's this channel is all, all about the discussion and all about uh, you know sharing your opinion so I want to hear about you about your opinion and Jordan Henderson said that everyone will talk about Liverpool and Man City because they won the league and were so good and Liverpool won the Champions League. It is easy to do that. But you have to look at the other teams as well. They are going to improve. I watched Tottenham against Juventus in a friendly and they were outstanding. There are more teams than us and City who will be competing for the Premier League title. Well, we will see about that. I don't think in the final stretch there will be another team competing for the Premier League title. It will be Liverpool and Manchester City and maybe Tottenham or like Chelsea could get there uh, closer to Liverpool than last year but I can't see either Ch Tottenham or Chelsea uh, really going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Liverpool and Man City for the title. These two teams are just too strong. Talking about Manchester City Jurgen Klopp, of course, uh, said that only four clubs can uh, spend whatever they want in the world, and that's uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man City and Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, Jurgen Klopp said, whatever they need, they do. You cannot compare that. That is the situation. Manchester City actually have responded to that claim. He, this is what uh, uh, Chief Operating Officer Omar Berrada said about Jurgen Klopp's comments. I don't know why they would make these comments. I don't know why they would look at other clubs it's not frustration or anger, we just find it curious that they would be highlighting our spending. We are fine with their spending. The reality is that all the top clubs invest as they see fit, saying us, Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid and Barcelona always invest 200 million is not correct. But that's in fact not what Jurgen Klopp said. Jurgen Klopp said that these four clubs can sometimes invest whatever they want into their squad without a problem. Like Man City spent close to um, more than actually a billion pounds since their takeover. And in that period, Liverpool spent like half of that money. So, and, and also, the only clubs that are on that level of spending are, in fact, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain and Man City. If you take into account the last like 10 years, those are the four clubs that spent close to a billion pounds, Man City more than that. So that's a fact. And you can't really argue with that, uh, even if Man City don't like Jurgen Klopp's comments. That's the reality of the situation. 
but uh, it will be down to who has the deeper squad and who can cope with injuries and tiredness and everything and I, I still feel that Liverpool are a little bit short we might need uh, one or two signings to really push Man City uh, over and and overtake them in the Premier League title race but we shall wait and see how this pans out I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching see you later guys goodbye